Let's see. And the remainder of this submodule is organized um, in a way where I really want you to emphasize um, the em emphasize the process that occurs in science, because very often I think you will see a diagram that looks like something like uh, this one here. Let's see. Yeah, diagram that looks like this, and. When you see something like that, you know, just to present it to you without further explanation or words, I guess what I want you to be really in habit of doing is uh, ask this question, how do we know? How do we know what we know? How do we know that sun has layers like this? Because I can tell you now, we've never sent a probe to the core of the sun. In fact, we've never sent a probe even near the sun. Uh, they will get burned up before long before they reach the, the surface of the sun. So, um, so given that a lot of this is not directly accessible, uh, the question, the natural question to ask, and question that I am really encouraging you to ask is, how do we know? And filling in that gap is the scientific process. And the scientific process has to be anchored in the things that we can directly observe. And, and the reason a lot of scientists go through almost a decade of training after high school is because um, the kind of the work that you need to do, the mathematical model that you have to build it takes a lot of training to be able to do that. And so, so, so we are not going into the deep mathematical details of that because it takes a decade of training. Training that I frankly don't have. I, don't, I, I wasn't trained as an astrophysicist. <laughs> I, I did take one astrophysics class in college. <laughs> but even from our lay people perspective, I want you to highlight that what the model predicts, it has to be anchored in the direct observations. So this is um, exam the direct observation of the sun. If you have the right equipment, you can get these pictures tomorrow. If you have right filters, you can get this directly from the sun. I guess the photosphere, that's just a photo. You just need something to dim the light so that your equipment doesn't burn. To get the chromosphere, I think you get need start needing um, better filters to filter out the most of the visible light. To get the corona, this is in X-ray, so now you need something that's uh, uh, more than your garden variety camera. But so these are the observations of the sun. Um, you can see things like the sunspots that even I think Galileo noticed, and. Um, and the mathematical models that we build of our sun, it has to uh, explain these features. It has to predict uh, certain things and it has to match up with what we see. So, so I, to emphasize that, I want you to start out with uh, just the observations of the sun. These are not model dependent. This is just something you can see. We do good enough of a telescope and you know, enough time to actually look at things. And um, all these are things that are directly observed. Now, if you are just uh, sticking to the uh, direct observation, um, there, there are limitations. As in, um, so with the direct observation, you can see this granulation pattern. And what you are limited to if you're just sticking to the direct observation is you see this pattern and it looks cool, looks fun. and that's where it ends. Um, you don't have any explanation of why. Why do we see this granulation pattern? And the explanation for that, this idea of convection cell, it comes from the, I hope this is the right slide, it comes from this model. This model includes this convection zone. And so in, in the mod mathematical model of this convection zone is where you can model those convection cells and how that would lead to something that looks like this uh, granulation pattern. 
So, so the value of the model is in it, it gives you uh, explanation and maybe even prediction for what you observe in terms of something more fundamental, something that has causal relationship from one to the other. It goes beyond just the pretty pictures. Um, and yeah, the solar cycle is again, something that's been noticed since a long time ago. And, and I think uh, I don't quite spend um, your textbook goes more into the part of the model that deals with the solar cycle. I don't because, because you know, you, we are going through this fast and uh, I'm not going to be asking you any questions about uh, why is it an 11 year cycle? Like I'm not going to ask you that. But in, in case you're interested, I think uh, the place where your textbook looks at is, uh, so uh, with us, yeah, in this uh, section and the uh, figure that I'm thinking of is this one here. So the textbook explains it in terms of the, I mean, it is definitely connected to magnetic activity. And the question is, um, why does that magnetic activity occur over a 22 year cycle with the intensity of sunspot uh, being half of that time period? And uh, this is where the textbook uh, that this differential rotation is may be connected to that. And the reason I'm not quite uh, asking you to go in the detail is, um, yeah, it is, uh, and um, let's see. Um, so, so, and, and I think this is good to highlight as a kind of cross section of scientific process. So there are, so this is, uh, what you might call settled science, as in uh, this much, uh, we are pretty sure that um, it, it, this seems to be how something should happen. And the expanding frontier of ignorance it has to do with the details because the detailed dynamics of this is very complicated. So that's why the textbook says it is still very difficult to build physical models or something as complicated as the sun. And, and uh, um, and yeah, and researchers have not yet developed a generally accepted model. And this is uh, just part of the, the scientific process that um, our expanding frontier of knowledge is uh, 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 consists of better and better approximations, a more detailed model that you know it fills in more gaps. But <laughs> the more we do that, there's more detail that where questions come up and we don't have a fully good answer to. So your textbook goes more into detail, but you can tell from my lack of this image in the slides that I've chosen not to go uh, into uh, depth here. So, but I want you to, uh, so this is structured so that, um, because I do want you to ask that question when someone tells you uh, something like this, I want you to ask the question of how do we know that? And um, what's our evidence for saying something like this? And the, our concrete pieces of evidence are the observations which are not model dependent. They, uh, you know, that's just what we see. And what, um, and what makes the scientific process remarkable is the additional things that we can uh, we can infer from the little bits that we do see, and by insisting on the consistency between uh, what we can calculate from the models and what we observe, we can uh, we can go quite far. 